Please join me in welcoming a fourth generation Angelino and LA's 42nd mayor, Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti. Thank you so much, Garrett, and a very good morning, everybody. It is great to be back here, and I want to thank the Los Angeles Business Council, the indomitable Mary Leslie, the entire board, and everybody for taking time to be here this morning and inviting me back to the Sustainability Summit, which has become a real gathering, not just for Los Angeles and the Southland, but a national and international uh, point of reference for catalytic change here uh, that has you know, an impact that is larger than just Los Angeles. And I've been so proud to be here in the past, to be in a room full of people who share the same uh, commitment, the same passion, the same purpose, and the same record of trying to innovate and to make sure that sustainability isn't just an issue area, but it is a shared value across all that we do uh, in public policy, in government, in our business practices, and in our daily lives as well. Only standing together today can we confront what is, in some ways, the biggest challenge that we have faced here in Los Angeles at least as the record shows, in 1,200 years, the monumental drought that is before us. And I think all of us know that Los Angeles' history is so intertwined with water. And it sustained the growth and the beauty of this city, allowed us, after the 1906 earthquake, when San Francisco, unfortunately, took 40 years to rebuild its economic strength and its population, that was a time of unprecedented boom here. And it was at the beginning of that time period, just around 1906, in the uh, early teens that we were able to have incredible and extraordinary engineering that brought drops of water that landed far away from the city here to sustain the growth that turned the San Fernando Valley into orange groves that allowed cities to come together to form the great city of Los Angeles and to see the entire county begin to bloom as well to be one of the great cities of the world. That river too that the water we originally took from the Los Angeles River is actually where we bear our name from. Uh, the 44 pobladores who settled this town, a racially diverse group of settlers who uh, were intrepid adventurers who came to where there was already an Indian village, didn't found their downtown on the coast, which is unique for a coastal city. Uh, it's strange that our downtown isn't Santa Monica, uh, but it's actually inland because of the Los Angeles River. And for many years, the water that was derived from the Los Angeles River along the Zanja Madre made the most powerful person in town, not the mayor, but actually the person who it was in charge of that aqueduct. And for us, as we watched the growth of this town, the combination of the water that we had here and that we imported here, um, we, see, we saw over time the management of water be quite irresponsible. We thought there would always be plenty. We had this kind of perverse inverse of the water that we engineered to come here that we began to, over time, build a city out that any drop of water that landed here in LA was quickly engineered to be washed out to the ocean unused. And the work that we are doing now to rethink uh, our relationship with water during this drought, the work that we are doing to capture stormwater now here in the Southland Basin, to recycle it, to recharge our aquifers, to reuse water, to sustain our city, is one of the critical actions that we must take today. And it's just one element of the plan that we released two weeks ago, which is the boldest and most ambitious uh, urban sustainability plan in the nation's history. It's called Plan, little p, to big L-A and then small N, so L-A pops out a plan. Um, and it's the first in the city's history, yeah, somebody who wrote it likes that. <laughs> a plan that, like the LABC's operating philosophy, integrates environmental health, economic prosperity, and equity and opportunity. Because we didn't want to do two things. We didn't want environmentalism, again, to be kind of a, a segregated issue area. We want it to be a value across everything we do. And every general manager, when I give him or her their uh, a review each year, I ask them, what are they doing on sustainability? including the city librarian and the chief of the fire department and uh, departments that you wouldn't think have a role but of course do have. But the second thing we wanted to do is not just have that value be an isolated one, that we see the issues of affordable housing and equity, economic opportunity tied together to sustainability because sustainability isn't just about environmental sustainability, it is about urban sustainability as well. And so the integration of those three things together um, I think have been incredible uh, for us moving forward this debate and giving us an action plan of what this city's next generation or two of growth can look like. And it very much mirrors what the LABC is all about. LABC is the most progressive business organization in this town and progressive in the sense of getting things done and moving the city forward. 
And I want to thank LABC for what it has done to tie together everything from housing to green jobs uh, to looking at the way that we have to live within our urban environment and have economic growth at the same time. I represented a neighborhood on the banks of the LA River for 12 years on the LA City Council. And um, uh, my first creative writing teacher, Lewis McAdams, in high school uh, was a man who founded Friends of the Los Angeles River to awaken this kind of concrete straitjacket that is, in many ways, the backbone of this entire city. A quarter of our residents live within walking distance of the LA River, but something that we had turned our back to for way too long. And I'm really excited about LABC's new report that's focused on the river, that's on the flip side of your, um, of your booklet. Um, and its strategy is as impressive as its title. LA Frontier, Capturing Opportunities for New Housing, Economic Growth, and Sustainable Development in LA River Communities. This new report will make certain that, that we continue to raise a city that is truly sustainable, one that's environmentally so sound, economically strong, and provides more opportunities for all Angelenos. In many ways, that river is a prism for many of the values that we hold and an opportunity, a platform for us to see greater transportation, health indicators, sustainability, urban ecology, um, uh, open space, as well as economic development, too. And what better place to raise a family than the place from which Los Angeles itself was raised. But it takes more than reports to build a sustainable Los Angeles. Government will lead, the private sector is essential, but each one of us as individuals have a very strong role to play. And I made sure that our sustainable city plan was designed with that in mind. What can I do as an Angelino? What role do I have as an individual? And its, it's creation reflected this, and I want to thank so many people in this room who helped us write and develop the plan as well. It was guided by a full spectrum of stakeholders from the business community, from academia, from the environmental community, and it calls on all of us to take action, whether it's taking a car trip off the roads each week, whether it's looking at the ways that we can change our landscaping, uh, whether it's looking at the commitments that we can make in our businesses. It sets ambitious goals, creates smart and strategic action plans to achieve them, and puts you squarely in the driver's seat to accomplish that. We released it two weeks ago, and surprisingly, much of the attention has been given to how, not surprisingly, excuse me, much attention has been uh, made about how uh, the work that we're doing to combat the drought. But as I said earlier, it approaches the full breadth of sustainability. We expect by 2035 the Los Angeles area to have about 500,000 more people. So as mayor, it's my obligation to ask what actions must we take now to ensure that future Angelinos have a sustainable life and an economic quality of life uh, that is good for all of us as well. And for the answers, we brought people together. We asked the public and the private sectors to collaborate. We set goals that are both ambitious, but they're also achievable. And to make the promise and possibility of Angelinos accessible to all, uh, sorry, of Los Angeles to all Angelinos, we wanted to make sure this happened in every neighborhood, in every corner of LA. I'm not worried about the momentum of our city right now. We have tremendous, tremendous momentum. In the last 22 months since I've been mayor, I've seen 70,000 new jobs created. Uh, we've helped crest that wave in areas like technology and biotech. We're seeing green jobs explode. We're seeing a record number of visitors. In fact, if you look at the four most important indicators to me, because people can make choices to come to a city or not, more people are choosing to live, work, visit, and study in Los Angeles than ever in our history. Our challenge is not whether or not, absolutely. It's good news for all of us. The challenge is whether or not that prosperity and that momentum will be felt by everybody in all parts of Los Angeles. So this plan breaks new ground to try to innovate and achieve some of that, especially when it comes to sustainability. It sets for the first time zero emissions good movement targets for the port of Los Angeles. Our ports are Southern California's leading cause of air pollution, and we are addressing it today. Gene Soroka, I know, is here someplace. Gene out here yet? He's coming, our, our great executive director of the ports, and he's leading the way in making sure that we put business first at the port, but hand in hand with a strength, strong value of sustainability. Second, we commit to adding at least 1,000 EV charging stations around our city by 2017. We don't want range anxiety to become an epidemic. As a longtime EV driver, don't worry. It isn't going to happen. For the first time, we're committing to reducing our greenhouse gas emissions by 80 percent in Los Angeles and leading a coalition of mayors to do the same across the country. I serve on the C40 steering committee, the global group of cities that are taking this action. I just was in New York last week with Eduardo Pais, the mayor of uh, Rio, who is our chair. And we are saying, you know, sometimes we're getting more bang for the buck talking to each other as mayors, even across national borders, than mayors talking to our national governments. 
And leading up to Paris, I believe that cities will be making a commitment of the majority of reductions to greenhouse gas emissions. In other words, if you took the cities out, they'd be less than, the, the national commitments would be less than what the cities are doing themselves. Um, for the first time, we're setting a target in Los Angeles to reduce per capita vehicle miles traveled to make sure that our investments in transportation infrastructure translate into less time in your car and a better quality of life. We just opened the bus rapid transit lane, for instance, uh, on Wilshire Boulevard, which will cut 15 minutes off your commute when you get on a rapid bus at rush hour, a half hour if you take the 405. For any of you who came from the valley today here, um, there's now a bus line that will take you there a half hour quicker uh, in rush hour. You should take advantage of it. This plan is our roadmap, and it was created to ensure that our decision making is meaningful here in LA. That's why in addition to targets, the plan lays out specific action steps to reach them. We'll make policy changes, for instance, first in using new paving materials to reduce the urban heat effect, installing solar panels on our street light poles, uh, making cuts in red tape that prevents homeowners and businesses from using cleaner energy. And true sustainability is much as about the environment as it is about our economy and also about equity. This is why our plan sets targets for green jobs, housing, access to healthy food, including farmers markets for the first time to accept, mandatorily, to accept uh, food stamps. And today I'm proud to report how individual Angelinos, the private sector, and nonprofits have already begun to adopt the plan. So folks said, oh, is this gonna be up on a shelf? From day one, we already have commitments to action um, to, uh, to make sure it goes through. If you haven't seen it already, please do read it. You can check it out at lamayor.org slash sustainability or plan.lamayor.org um, to adopt, sorry, to adopt the sustainable plan into action yourselves. Whether it's your organization, whether it's you as an individual, you can make commitments today, and I would ask you to do so. Let me give you some examples of commitments that Angelinos are already making. A sixth grade science teacher at Echo Horizon School has restructured her curriculum to focus her students on the drought. For their final class project, students will draft a proposal for installing rain gardens and rain barrels on their campus, and they can actually see it get done. The Youth Policy Institute is dedicating a team to help Angelinos gain access to green space and good food, particularly in communities of color. UCLA is replacing 73,000 square feet of ornamental turf with drought tolerant plants, estimated to save five million gallons of water a year. And by the way, when the governor called on all of us to replace 50 million square feet of turf in this state in the coming years, we made the commitment last week that Los Angeles with just 10% of the population will do half of that amount by the end of this year. Even fashion is getting on board. One of the commitments that came from the same day we released the plan was from a local business, Reformation. And Reformation, Reformation CEO, Yale Aflalo, called my office, said she was sick of fashion wasting water. Many people don't know this, but after agriculture, fashion is the second biggest user of water of any industry in the world. And so she is committed to cut her business water use by 25% and setting a new standard for environmental accountability. Reformation will report to customers how much water goes into each blouse, jacket, or dress that they make. And if you call her up, I'm sure she'll be happy to give you a tour of Reformation's drought-tolerant landscaping, gray water system that supports her factory in downtown LA. And to top it off, Yale is paying her employees a living wage. It's not just the right thing to do, it also makes economic sense. Because everyone knows our city prospers when people have more money to spend into our economy instead of just scraping by to pay the rent which is why I'm also very thankful to Los Angeles Business Council for supporting my responsible plan to raise the minimum wage here in Los Angeles. It is time for us to make sure that we help a million people be lifted out of poverty and that we have things like our educational challenges, uh, things like our housing crisis addressed by allowing people to spend more, have more in their pocket, and move our economy forward. It's a plan that leaders like Rick uh, Caruso and Eli Broad have embraced and endorsed. Um, and we can finally lay to rest the myth that you can either be pro-worker or pro-business. We're reducing our business tax at the same time that we're going to raise our wages here in L.A. And LABC, thank you. We know that we can help our environment and our economy simultaneously. I'm very pleased to report progress on the LABC's economic priorities of better transit and more affordable housing, the jobs picture that I painted for you, and over the last 18 months, I've gone to Washington and re re uh, returned so far almost $3 billion to accelerate our transit, whether it's the Wilshire subway line or the four other lines we have underway, including the Expo line, which will open up here from the west side to downtown just next year. We already are testing the, the uh, um, cars on the tracks. 
And finally, finally, we're going to bring rail to LAX. After 30, 40 years of talking about it, we're going to make sure that it's there. We're making progress on our housing shortage, too. I've set the goal of building 100,000 units of housing in this city in the next five years. And all of you who are developers, please come. Come to our transit corridors, especially work with us at the MTA and the city of Los Angeles. We're accelerating, and we have a record amount of investment in land use this past year that we've ever seen in the city's history. Poverty, jobs, housing, our drought, these are the pressing challenges we face. In some ways, they are all parts of the same prism. The light that we refract through that is the challenge that we face here today. And LABC gets it, increasingly the city gets it, and I know this room gets it, that what you do on the environment affects the economy positively. What you do on the economy positively impacts how we get around this town in terms of transportation. What we do on transportation can help reform our education system and give greater opportunities to our young people as well. As CEO of the city, I understand that it's my job to not just put the vision forward, but to actually implement them and get them done. And I couldn't do it without the partnership in this room. We're already leading the way in water conservation as the best city in this state. Since the governor has called on us to do this, we've even accelerated more of what we're doing. Save the Drop, our great campaign to tell Angelinos what they can do, and go to savethedropla.org to find out the things that you can do, like we will tear up your grass basically for free. Companies like Turf Terminators will come out, use the subsidy, cost you nothing, and then after that, your water bill is down 20, 30, 40 percent the next month, and they're able to pay their employees using that. Uh, they went from four to 450 employees just in the last year, part of the 4,800 green jobs that have been spurred since I became mayor here, too. So our economy and our leadership in our economy is going to be critical to moving the sustainability of the city forward. 100 years ago, we engineered this unprecedented system to bring water here. We dredged a port that became the number one port uh, in America. We have shown the ability and the ways to think big and to act big. It is now our generation's challenge and our moment in time to make sure that that happens as well. To me, that is the true definition of sustainability, to sustain the life that has been an example to the world here in Los Angeles and that will be for many, many years to come. Thank you so much, and let's all do our part. Thank you.